welcome to another episode of What's New in Cabinet Vision 2012 R2. In this video, we're going to be going over the new general features. The first thing that I want to cover is found in the Setup Package Utility, so let's go there first. Now that the Setup Package dialog is open, we need to have a package that we can import. I'm just going to pop one in real quick. Great. Now what we have done is allow you to more easily import the contents of a package. So let's click on the Swap Between Creation and Import Modes button to look at that import functionality. Before we go any further, I would like to point out another new feature. Whenever you have any parts defined in a setup package and those parts have a price matrix attached to them, the price matrix will be included in the package as well. As you can see, I have already imported this package into Cabinet Vision once before. In previous versions, to overwrite my old package would have been a laborious task, requiring me to expand each node and verify that all the items are set to overwrite. With Cabinet Vision 2012 R2, you can now just click on the Overwrite All Contents with Package Matches button, like so. In addition to overwriting matches, you can also use this button to keep items from being overwritten. Finally, these two remaining buttons allow you to select a single node and either overwrite matches with package contents or use the existing items for matches on all child nodes of your selected node. Let me show you real quick how that works. Now you can see that only the selected node and its child nodes were set to keep existing items. Let's move back to the splash screen so we can take a look at a cool new feature of the user parameters. With the introduction of Cabinet Vision Solid 2012 R2, you can now define a choice list for your system parameters. Let me go ahead and put one in here for us to look at. Okay, now we have a choice list that I created. If I were in a job, the sidebar would have a variable named style width, and it would display a list of choices that I defined here in the value column. Setting up a choice list is actually pretty easy. First, we need to let Cabinet Vision know that the value is a list. We do that by typing in the LST keyword in a set of angled brackets. Next, we start to define the options of the list. That format is the choice text, the equal sign, and the value that the option is supposed to equal. If we want additional options, we need to add the pipe symbol, and then we can add another option. We can continue to do this for each option we want. This is how my choice list for my style width parameter looked like, properly formatted. Now let's move on to an in-job assembly wizard feature. Let's begin talking about this feature by starting a new job. Now that we have the job properties open, I can actually show this feature here. First, we need to go to either the cabinet properties or the closet properties. For this video, I'm going to select cabinet. Now this feature is in the assembly wizard, so let's click on the modify for this job button to bring it up. You can see the new feature now, the save as system construction button. It's something that we not only brought back from older versions, but updated as well. Let's click on it to see how it works. Now instead of just updating the current construction method, we have the option to either add a new construction method or replace the existing construction method. When replacing, we can also choose which method we want to replace. Moving back to the job properties, let's go ahead and click OK so that we can begin a new job. Now that we have a job open, I'm going to skip ahead and add a wall with a cabinet on it so I can show you some more of the new features. This next feature is in the report center, so I'm going to go ahead and double click on the cabinet, and now I'm going to click on the reports tab. And now you can see the new part sheet button. With this button, we can create part sheets, similar to assembly sheets. Let's click on it to see what happens. You can now see the part report dialog being displayed. This dialog allows us to select a template, see the name of the assembly being output, decide whether we want to output door parts, decide whether we want only machined parts, send the sheets to the drawings view, print the sheets, or cancel out. This is a sample of the part sheet template that ships with Cabinet Vision. One of these sheets will be printed or sent to Drawings view for each part that meets the selected criteria. 
You can edit the templates just as you would a assembly sheet or wall elevation template. Another new feature of the Report Center is a deletion confirmation box in the order entry. Let's go to order entry and check that out. In previous versions, if I right clicked on the standard base item here in the list and selected delete, it would just remove it. Now it prompts me to verify whether I wanted to delete it or not. Let's try that out. And now you can see that we've been prompted to confirm that we want to delete the selected object. You also have the option to not show this message ever again. Moving back to the plan view, there are a few new features that I want to show you in the job preferences. So let's go ahead and go there. Now these new features exist on the measurement units tab, so let's go ahead and click on that. And now you can see the new features. We have the ability to define the symbols for our imperial precision units and our metric precision units. We talked about how this could affect the program in the CAD video. Since we did it there, I'm not going to do it again here. If you want to learn more about this, you can look in your help files or you can watch the CAD video once again. Once again, we move back to our plan view and the next feature has to do with constraints. So I'm going to right click and edit shape of the cabinet on the wall. I'm going to skip ahead to the part where I have added a constraint to the shape to show this off. Okay, now you can see the new feature here. You can now test any text parameters that you use for constraints, much like you would in the object tree. Let's try it out. I'm going to use sample as my parameter. Now I know this isn't going to work, but I just want to kind of show this off. You can see that it returned a syntax error. This is because I don't have a sample parameter defined in my cabinet. Had we entered a proper value, it would have shown the correct result for us. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about is the render mode. Now, with Cabinet Vision 2012 R2, whenever you change the render mode and you leave the view or exit the job or close out of solid, when you come back, it will still be in that render mode. Thank you for taking the time to view this demonstration. If you would like more information on Cabinet Vision Solid, please feel free to visit the Cabinet Vision website at www.cabinetvision.com.